everybody, this is Grandmaster Jacek Stopa. Uh, welcome to my course on Rook Endgames for intermediate players. And by intermediate players, I mean players around the rating of um, 1700 and higher, FIDE. Um, we will be taking a look at some of the major types of Rook Endgames. This is a uh, uh, around a three hour course. And um, I would like to start with uh, some of the more basic end games that most of you probably already um, have a good understanding of. Um, for instance, the famous Philidor position. Okay. So this is something that everybody, every chess player should uh, be familiar with. It's an extremely uh, important position. Um, by the, in your in your whole life chess career, you will see this type of position at least once. I'd say a couple of times. Um, I've seen uh, this sort of position in my own practice, maybe more than ten times in actual games, including blitz games. Uh, maybe three to four long games overall. So this is something extremely important that you know how to defend this position. Um, so what is what is the idea? Um, Basically, in the type with a rook and a pawn against a rook, white's only serious shot at winning the game is to promote this pawn. Um, so, what is a strategy that black should choose to sort of defend to make sure that the pawn doesn't promote the case? So, first of all, it's, a, it's very important that this king uh, be in front in front of the pawn um, because it will serve as like a, as a blockade. It will basically um, try to you know control these, these squares and make it impossible for white to kind of break through um, where white will be trying these tricks to you know to promote the pawn into a queen here on d8. So, that's the number one and most important thing. Like this king should basically be in front of the pawn. So you can imagine all sorts of all sorts of situations in, in actual practical games where this king will be maybe somewhere on the side, maybe behind the pawn, or exactly in front of the pawn, like near the pawn, you know. So so there is just a multitude of possibilities there. Um, and those possibilities will account for some very tricky cases, obviously that the practice has seen over years um, but that is why it's always good to start with a base scenario and that is the this is basically the base scenario this is something that black should um, target this is the kind of position black should target when it comes to drawing these these uh these feeder positions so the king is correctly on e8 if it was on h7 you would probably try to rush it over here and white would probably try to cut you off right but um but that's a, an entirely different case um, let's just look at this more, most basic case and see how white can try to break through anyway so d5 okay um basically there is a variety of options um, it doesn't have to be king d5 king e5 or d5 or whatever um just the moves that sort of try to, you know, um, bring the pawn forward. Okay, so let's say king d5. Oh, white is maybe trying to play king e6 and checkmate. Okay, so, you know, black has to be be careful here. Black just readjusts the king to the most um, sturdy, I'd say, square, d8, because it's right in front of this pawn. Uh, so this is where it will be catching this pawn, okay. Um, king d6 with a primitive threat of checkmate in one. And this is the first serious spot where black has to actually react. Okay, so um, so you can imagine black making a move like king c8. Um, so this is still fine. Okay, not so easy to um, not so easy to um, you know just uh, get, kick this king out of here but you can imagine some scenarios under which king e7 taking control of these two squares right the king c2 kicking the king out okay maybe this is not the best 
kind of a response here, giving these ch these chances to white. Then still in this case it's okay, but okay, it has to be it has to be precise. This is principle number two. Um, so how to how to kick this king out of this dangerous position? Well, checks from the side. Okay, checks from the side. This is very important. So black is taking advantage of the fact that there's this king cannot progress. It cannot hold on to the sixth ring. There's no way for the rook to to inter, interse to um, intersect, you know, these these checks uh, uh, here. So black can allow himself to check and force the king backwards. Okay. And once this has been accomplished, actually this is something that is very specific to this field door position. It is the defense on the sixth rank. Defense on the sixth rank. What do I mean by that? Well, black will be keeping the sixth rank mainly to prevent this king from breaking it, from you know uh, coming deeper in with these uh, with these checkmates and force white to kind of show some strength in a different way so let's say that white is trying to play around here a little bit readjust the king okay this happens all the time in practical games you will see that in a position where there is some more or less obvious ways way to force events for instance here it's d5 you know, obviously white will have to kind of you know go for it sooner or later um, you will often see that even a very strong player, like even maybe Carlson, you know, that they just kind of play around uh, just just uh, just to, you know, give the opponent some opportunity for making a mistake instead of forcing events right away. This is something that you'll see, okay, all the time, such as the smooth rook b8, you know, readjusting here, maybe without anything immediate coming in, but there is always some imaginary, you know, some threats of rook g7, okay. Um, you know, sometimes the ghosts will kind of chase you when, when, you, when you're playing the game and you will see danger where there is no danger. So when you're on the other side, when you're the guy, the, 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 the player creating those threats, um, yeah, you can just, you know, play around with this effect in your favor. Um, so rook g8, rook b7, pushing downwards, okay, and black, the key is that black doesn't do anything fishy which for instance this move would be this is what i was talking about you know white would give black a chance to make this very bad move king e6 which after d5 with this idea okay you know you can see how this king is now forced out of the ideal position and this position okay already lost okay so black just very sturdy and sticks to this ideal square on the a so what happens here? Well, White realizes that there is no easy way of just you know, of getting this king out of here. He wishes he could play king c6, king d6, and chase this king away to an inferior side position, and then just go and freely promote the pawn. But black is sturdy, and White has to basically sooner or later go for this move d5 to force events. Okay, so d5. And what does black do? Well, you can just dance around this, this, uh, these squares here. And what do they? What did I mean by holding on to the sixth rank? Is basically the idea that black is waiting for this pawn to hit the sixth rank. Why? Well, we will see in just a little bit. Why is black doing that? So black is preventing the king from entering the sixth rank. Um, and he has a, a, a defense ready for if white plays d6, which is what happens here. In c8, this is not like a much of a deviation from the ideal position of d8. The king still touches these, these uh, d, d, uh, d file squares. And okay, white realizes there is nothing. Maybe rook g8, okay, just there is no way to progress. How to progress? Well, white can try to play around, but we just make a waiting move. And we just stick to this defensive position no matter what. Okay. So that is why White decides to play b6 here, creating the very powerful threat. Okay, what happens if now Black tries to keep to this position? Now, this I would like everybody to stop this video and for themselves try to come up with the reason for why King D8, you know, this is persuade. 
you can you can make an argument this is a good 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 move right i mean king is is standing on to to uh, to the ideal square d8 ready for some for some um, advancements of this pawn ready to catch the pawn but there is a very serious problem and i would like everybody to find it what am i talking about here why is king d8 a losing mistake 